Hey guys, Joe Pizinski here with Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I think I got a good one for you today. First, thank you to all my new subscribers. Thank you for all the thumbs up. Thank you for all the views. It really keeps me going. All right, if you're in a machine shop environment, sooner or later somebody's going to walk in a big piece of plate and say, can you work on this? And you just pray that they want holes popped in the front because when it comes time to put holes around the perimeter, that's a whole nother animal. And if you're in a job shop environment, you can't always get sophisticated with your setup, so sometimes you got to wing it. But still winging it has to have some kind of integrity. And I just finished up a job that was a rather large box made out of material, just like this, half inch LE phenolic, and this is about the average size. And you know that if you're going to squeeze this in your vise, by the time you have this in your vise and your drill and your drill chuck, all of a sudden you need about another 10 inches of room on your machine going to show you a setup it took about five minutes to do worked like a charm and I think I'm going to put this one in my book because it worked really well let's take a walk over to mill take a look all right guys here's the deal got yourself a big piece of LE phenolic or aluminum or wood or whatever else it is you want to do somebody wants a bunch of 5 16 holes in the side and guess what when you stick this in your vise, you can crank your table all the way down, and by the time you do, you're going to need to bring your everything. You're just going to run out of room, trust me. A lot of times, if you have a 12 or a 13, 14-inch thick plate, it's just not going to happen. You can save some room by putting your tool directly in a collet, and you can buy yourself about 3 and a half inches, but if that's just not an option, take a look at how I did it. slide the table back, slide the head back. You have an awful lot of room right here that's not being utilized. You also have room to either side of the machine when the time comes. But for right now, let's take a look at what's in the back. Now please bear in mind I put this rig together in about 10 minutes because in a job shop, time is money and I didn't feel like waiting around all day for Piece of one by two stock, about two feet long. Three quarter by two bars on the end. Three inch cant twists holding it down. Piece of quarter inch, inch and a quarter, 90 degree stock on the end. Nice and rigid. Now you say, okay, well, how, part's gonna hang there. How are we gonna straighten it out? Take a couple of one, two, three blocks put it right on the ways of the machine boom look at that are you kidding me how sweet is that take your clamps and clamp it off okay now here's the one thing that you're going to need to remember if you're ever going to use this trick Don't forget to take the one, two, three blocks out from underneath this plate. If you're going to be really driving down on this thing with a lot of pressure, sneak them in when you do the holes. That way this doesn't shift if you think you're going to hit it that hard. Pull the one, two, three blocks out. Take the handles off your vices as well. Pull these off because if you're like me, it's just instinctive to just go for the handle first. Everything is locked in. There's no Oilers in the way. There's no digital readout scales in the way. Back and forth you go. In and out, up and down. You got plenty of room. This plate is 11 and a half inches tall. And under normal circumstances with a two and a half inch projection on your drill, you'd be in a whole lot of trouble. Quick and dirty, clamped all together. Material just laying around. Indicate the face of your angle bar or one by two or whatever you use as a cross member but a nice thick piece of angle stock works very well that's it quick dirty clamps boom holes done
All right. Well, I got to tell you, that did work like a charm. Uh, naturally, it wasn't pretty because it was all put together with cant twist clamps, but if you have those three inch and two inch cant twist clamps, you know that you can really torque them things down and really get uh, the rigidity out of it that you need. It's also a good project for a rainy day if you want to actually want to put one of those together with cap screws and dowel pins and get all kinds of fancy and rigid. It's entirely up to you how much material and time you have. Well, that's it. That's all I got for today. I hope you got something out of that. I know that saved my butt, and if you can use it, keep it in your memory banks and save some time and frustration, have at it. Until then, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. Uh, that's it. Joe Pizinski, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. You know, one more thing. While I have your ear, if there's any scuba divers out there, we got some scuba products that we have also made videos of. Please take a look. It's a great product. Super bright. It's on eBay right now. Outstanding price. That's all I'm going to say. All right. Sorry, I didn't mean to throw a commercial in there. Joe Pizinski, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.